hij, hij was mortier. Uh, more and more pedals, preamps, uh, DI's and small amps are uh, popping up nowadays trying to recreate uh, the classic uh, Ampex sound and the SVT in particular. Um, will only a pedal or a preamp do the job? Do you need a tube preamp? Do you need a full uh, tube amp? So with the power tube amp or is just the A10 cabinet uh, enough to give you the SVT experience? Um, and are we actually talking about uh, gigging with traditional amp and a cabinet setup or are you trying to get a uh, uh, comfortable in-ear sound with the classic Ampex sound or are you only talking about recording or for using, using it at home, uh, practicing? Um, maybe you're just happy with your clean tone but you're only looking for dirt or distortion. And with all those alternatives in mind I think we have the tendency to overlook uh, the basic quality of the SVT and do we actually understand where the sound comes from does it come from the preamp or just from the tube power amp or is it maybe the A10 cabinet and how big is the effect of all those factors separately um, second I think we also overlook the basic feeling an SVT gives you while playing uh, people tend to look at the EQ curve, like the, the amount of highs, mids, lows and there's a lot of amps that can simulate the SVT by copying this EQ cur curve but they don't get the real real feel still I think. Um, also people as soon as they talk, start talking about tubes they start talking about grit and distortion and they're not talking about just the basic clean character of the SVT. Um, a big part is, I think, is more subconscious maybe, is this interaction with the amp. And maybe that's the compression, the tube compression. Also the cabinet compresses because it's a closed four chamber setup. So that's also probably a huge part in the, in the whole experience of playing through the amp. And is this something you can hear back? Is this something you can hear back when you record it so, and listening on your headphones or on your small speakers? Since I'm the happy owner of a 70s SVT, I would like to shed some light on those matters. So I'm start, I started to uh, prepare this uh, super involved, mega nerdy uh, video. Uh, I do like some talking to explain stuff, why, why I'm doing stuff. So if you don't like the talking, either go or <laughs> you can uh, see my timestamps in the description to skip uh, directly to uh, clips you like. Um, like the most of you, I already tried a bunch of stuff. I had an Ampeg SVP Classic preamp, I combined it with a power amp. I also had the SVT DI with another preamp. Uh, and I tried a bunch of different cabinets, of course. And on festivals, they give you a lot of uh, different uh, combinations of amps, too, of course. Um, this is now the setup I'm using. Um, so, with my 70s SVT and uh, Cabinets are an exact copy of the late 60s, early 70s uh, SVT cabinet, uh, only divided in half to make it a bit more portable. So I played a clip once, but I recorded six channels simultaneously, so you get more performances uh, after each other. But it's the same same uh, clip, but with different uh, outputs. Uh, first a clean uh, DI, uh, then I got a SVT preamp out, and I got a uh, tube, uh, now on a speaker DI built in into my SVT, so that's the signal uh, after the tube, so this power amp and the preamp both. Uh, to compare, I connected the cheap uh, Behringer DI and I use it as a speaker DI too. And then um, I got a close mic, Electrovoice RE20, and I got a distant mic and large condenser. Um, and after that I also make a combination to catch, try to catch the full SVT experience uh, with the speaker DI combined with a microphone 50-50 and then uh, with the speaker DI and both microphones so one third, one third, one third to see if that catches the, the vibe. After this I uh, bypassed the preamp of the SVT so went straight into the two power amp of the SVT and still able to uh, record the, the the speaker DI's and the microphones. 
And after this I bypassed the total, the SVT in total, so I went into a class D power amp. So no tubes, no SVT, just uh, clean stuff, but still with the 8 to 10 cabinet, so you can see what the effect of this is. Uh, I leveled everything as much as possible with a loudness built-in loudness meter plug-in. I did no compressing, no EQ or whatsoever. I didn't try to get the best bass sound ever, I just tried to catch the SVT and s see where I could get some answers to the questions I had before. So this is the the biggest dream all bass players have. Six channels baby! <laughs> wow! So I'll be using uh, first my precision with tone totally opened and it's got flat wounds, old flat wounds, really old school labellas uh, and the second one is the the jazz bass with uh, uh, fresh uh, DR round wounds. Um, I'll be I would love to go direct in my, in my amp but uh, for the setup I need to go through a, a preamp first. Uh, for this purpose I use my totally neutral, at least that's how it's developed and I think it sounds pretty neutral, uh, Raven Labs uh, preamp. I use the second input that's got the lowest impedance. This one is made for piezo, that's 10 mega ohms, so that would affect the magnetic pickup sound a little. I'm using the bottom one and that sounds fairly similar to just going straight into the to the amp. Uh, this one I record direct and I feed the amp uh, with uh, with the signal too. Uh, the amp is set flat on only the mid. I always boost the middle a little, so 800 hertz in the middle. I don't use uh, ultra high, I don't use ultra low and I use the regular uh, input channel. Um, from the back I'll be taking uh, I'll be taking uh, the pre-out this is the pre-out if you can see it and that goes straight into my Aguilar and I, the Aguilar I don't use as a preamp, I have the preamp switched off as you can see now it's acts like a fairly neutral DI. Um, second, I use uh, my, I got a custom made uh, speaker DI, so that's that's uh, the signal that before that goes to the speaker uh, speaker or whatever, it takes the both the preamp and the power amp uh, sound. So that's interesting. Um, to compare, and because nobody, not everybody has got a speaker DI, I use uh, a parallel output. I just use a parallel unused output from my cabinet. Well, it's not output, but it's the input. But I run a cable in it, and it I feed to the Behringer or Beringer, as they say in Germany. It's a German brand. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can do this with every DI. So read your manual first, please. I have to attenuate minus 40 with those two buttons. At least that's what the manual says, and I have to push the ground lift, so that's what I did. So this is the speaker output, so that I can compare it with my own speaker DI. Uh, oh yeah, and then I got microphones of course, the close mic, uh, and I like to take it from uh, the on the from the in the middle was the, the in the middle of the cone and the and the dome. So you combine the thump and the overtones, and it's about two inches away, I guess. Uh, and then hidden beneath is a road, the Australian Rode, or whatever it's pronounced. Oh, there it is. It's the NT1, I think so, yeah. And this is uh, set uh, straight in the middle of the 810, as you can see. I got two 410s, but it's exactly like uh, old SVT 810, doesn't matter. And it's 60 centimeters, so that's uh, two feet. It's about as far away as wide the cabinet is. That's like a standard setup. And if you do have an old SVT, you know there's an external speaker out. It's the first plug from here. Um, you cannot, you can, but uh, if you use that one as a parallel output to your uh, 
to your DI as a speaker DI, you will switch the amp to 2 ohms. And uh, since the speaker, the DI doesn't have any load, uh, you will have to stay on 4 ohms because the A10 is 4 ohms. And say, uh, that being said, never use only a DI connected to your SVT or to a tube amp in general. The DI itself doesn't have a load, so you need to uh, connect a load. So that's a speaker or an external speaker load or whatever. So never do this without speakers. Second setup is the output of the Raven Labs goes into the slave input. That's the second from the back. Ah, well, it doesn't matter. There's a slave input in there. And since this is a science project, the last thing I did is run the Raven Labs um, direct into the power amp of a Class D, the PF500. I run it into the power amp, so then you can combine. You, you can compare the effect of the power amp of the SVT to a fairly neutral power amp, the Class D power amp. See what the effect is. So. Finally, let's uh, let's make some noise. Uh, first, let's start with my uh, old precision with uh, flat wounds. Tone is wide open. So second is a bit more modern tone, so the jazz bass with both pickups, tone open and with uh, new uh, round wound strings. <laughs> And the same as before, again with the jazz bass, but this time slipping to uh, so you can uh, judge the overtones a little bit better.
next clips will all be on my uh, position. Um, I now start to bypass the preamp of the SVT, so I uh, plug in directly into the power amp. Uh, please note I uh, boosted in on the preamp the mids a little, so if you leave out the preamp you'll cut the mids a little compared to the clips before. And now let's do the same but then bypassing the SVT in total so I'll go directly into a class D power amp. So to make the comparison a bit uh, easier, I, uh, I uh, combined three clips uh, after each other. So there's three different performances uh, you already saw before, but now uh, directly after each other. First the full SVT, um, and to catch the full SVT I got the clip with the, combined with the direct mic and the, the speaker DI. Second is through the SVT but without the preamp, but again with the speaker DI and the microphone. And further is through the Class D power amp and that I caught too with uh, speaker DI, which is a bit stupid because the Class D doesn't add to the sound, I think. So in that case you would normally use a preamp out, but for the sake of comparison I did it this way. Um, after finishing the recordings of this um, video, I uh, I bought uh, a bit too late, I'm afraid, this uh, beautiful DI, the Passive uh, Radial JDI. Um, so first things first, yes, a Passive DI works for my feeling perfect with my Passive instrument, if, especially if you don't look, are not looking for this super hi-fi, high end uh, high sound, I think it's super warm. Um, and second, it has the possibility to use a speaker DI too, and it's a whole passive thing. You have to uh, attenuate first the 
the the front with 15 decibels uh, pad and second you have this can you read it uh, speaker uh, speaker option an extra 30 decibels attenuation and not only it attenuates it also um, brings uh, some filter in place to simulate a speaker sound a little I noticed um, I noticed a little less low, uh, sub lows, a bit more mids, and a bit less highs. It's not super strong, but really useful. I did use it on stage a couple of times, uh, so not bringing the microphone, but bringing this, and connected to a speaker out, and uh, used the speaker DI, and I was actually pretty happy. It's got way more definition than a microphone, and you still got the feeling. Um, you still got the feeling you're playing from SVT, even if you got the strong sound back from the PA. If I go directly in a in a in a straight into some DI, I always feel like the sound is coming from a totally different place. I'm in a totally different zone, standing in front of my amp, and then there's some weird direct clicky sound coming out of the PA. And this is somewhere in between. I don't say it's the holy grail. Holy Grail would be a good DI sound mixed with the good uh, microphone sound, but it's a bit more involved for the mixer to get the sound right. So this is a good option. I can uh, play short clips. <laughs> So I think my main conclusion has to be um, you can only judge an SVT there where it belongs and that's on stage. I think the differences you hear on headphones levels uh, by no means uh, represent the differences you uh, experience on stage. Um, the 3D authority of an SVT on stage I think is still unequaled. I tried different options already but they never came close I think. Uh, the way it blends with the band, the way it's warm but without being overbearing. If you're looking for something that sounds good on your headphones, you should judge it on your headphones, of course. Does it keep you playing? Does it stimulate you in what you do? Um, if the recordings of all the different setups make one thing really clear is that the mic uh, uh, recordings are really different from the direct recordings. I think the difference between all the direct recordings are way more subtle. So the cabinet has really a really a strong play in this matter. Um, starting with the SVT preamp alone, I already think that enriches the sound and makes it more warm and deeper and wider. And that's all uh, that's exaggerated by using the power amp too, that really adds more sub lows and you get this tube compression clearly. Um, only playing through the solid state stuff can sound good with the cabinet, but uh, is clearly stiffer. So does one of the pedals or one of the amps out there come even close? Uh, that's up to you. Uh, hopefully I gave you uh, some good examples of how SVT can sound in all the different uh, stages. Um, the Behringer DI is a really good uh, possibility to experiment with this because it's so cheap if you want to go that way. I think it's a really useful tool. It sounds a bit cheaper and more boxy than the SVT DI but I think you can get really decent uh, decent results. Uh, the radio of course is a really good uh, possibility too but already more expensive. But you can also use it in uh, different ways too. Um, like I said, I did try alternatives, but I never felt they came even close to a full SVT setup. Um, I'm totally happy and it keeps my body in shape. Um, I don't think the judging the SVT through just recordings will do it justice. Uh, you can get totally killer sounds out of it for recording, but it's mainly meant to be a tool for on stage, I think. And I'm not the only one. 
Um, hope, hopefully this helps a little in the whole matter. Uh, see you next time. Let me know what you think. Bye.